Espinosa. <laughs> from the Espinosa's Urban Farm. And we're here in our side yard today because we wanted to bring you guys an update on the sub pod. So Jose will do most of the talking. He's the one that's mostly involved with the sub pod. Um, I'm mostly involved with getting all the food ready for the sub pod. So yeah, we'll just take you through it, let you know what we like about it, let you know where we've struggled with it, and give you guys our honest opinion. We're not affiliates of SubPod. It's just something that we purchased for ourselves to try and do some composting on our urban farm. Oh, we would definitely be an affiliate. We do love the SubPod. Yeah. Let's, let's show you what we got going on. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look in the SubPod, and then I'll walk you through some of the stuff that we've been doing um, or how you feed it, okay? I've done it several times before. I'm sure Nicole will try to include some of that. Um, so basically, we got the sub pod here. Uh, we got two sides to the sub pod just to help divide the food. Um, initially, we put 2,000 worms in here. Um, I did add another 1,000 worms just because I wanted to make sure to give it a good kick start. But if you can see, let's go in here. If you could see, I mean, we feed this thing about five times a day at least. So you see some of the food that's here and some of this stuff that's been compost already. Um, there's more at the bottom. We, we fed this side about three times this week and you don't see any big worm activity on this side. Um, I fed the other side last, but there is a lot of life in here that is also helping uh, break down the food so let me show you the other side that i just fed recently last night and i'll kind of give you a quick walk through you can see this cloth that it came to it, it kind of is breaking apart now the worm mat that's the what they worm call it mat, yes so i need to find out how to get more of that but if you can come in you see there's worms everywhere here there's one here um i saw several of the over here but the worms do try to look you can see actually there's a worm right there's in the material right in there, yeah. so they they like eat it up compost it and it breaks apart easy so um i'm gonna do a little bit of research and see where i can get some more and i'll try to put the link on this video for the worm mats for correct? the worm mats okay. exactly um oh there's a lizard in there <laughs> that's one of the problems that i actually don't like about it um and it's actually a an error I made um, we have a lot of lizards here so I'm sure the lizards get in here because there's a lot of worm food and they probably eat some of the worms but it's because of this see if you can take a look here on the side there's these holes where the worms are encouraged to go out into the garden or into the raised bed and you know hide out or get comfortable whenever there's a lot of light out we need to fill this up all the way to the top so that there's no lizards getting in and eating our worms so it looks like the holes that Jose is talking about, when we filled it, we filled it high enough initially, it's but settled. things settled. So we do need to come back in and put some more dirt and some more compost in here so that we reach that level so that the lizards can't get in through those large holes. Um, and that you're supposed to bring it up to that level because above that is the air hole. So it'll still get ventilation. Um, I'm gonna take a scoop here and kind of take a look and see what's at the bottom. Um, just so that I can show you guys um, So see at the bottom at the top of this you see the food and every time we have one of those small Cans of composting a liter and a half. I believe it's what it is. So for every liter and a half I throw a handful of shredded paper in with that But you can see here that they've definitely been you know doing their job in composting all the food and all the carbon and you see all this beautiful black dirt here oh look at that <laughs> i don't know what that is but if anybody knows please let us you Some know kind of larva there's more of them yeah so but look down here yeah, it's hard to see with the light but yeah there's a lot of stuff going on down there more larva yeah worms right there you see that mm -hmm. trying to get out yeah. here oh no he's escaping <laughs> all right so a lot of viewers have been asking questions um, they want to know do we like the system would we recommend it and what are some of the pros and cons that we've seen so far 
So do we like the system? I personally do like the system. I think it's doing its job. Um, you know, the food has been getting composted. We throw a lot of food in here. Uh, one thing they did say is that it would take at least, I wanna say three to four months before you can harvest your first um, worm compost so that you can put in the garden. Um, we're pretty close to three months. And as you can see, we're not even halfway filled on this left side here on this far side. Um, but we've been putting the food in there and it's been getting composted. So it takes a little bit longer from what I read for us to fill it completely because you got to have it filled at least to the top here before you can harvest. Um, you don't want to harvest any sooner than that. So I think one of the cons are that because of all the holes on the side, it does let a lot of other life in. Like we were getting a bunch of ants when it was really hot and we didn't know how to figure that out. After a while, we started adding a little bit more moisture and I think that helped clear out the ants. But as mentioned earlier, you know, if you don't watch how fast, you know, your garden settles, other lizards or other, you know, life can get in and start eating your worms. So that's one of the cons that I think, in my opinion. The only con for me has been that I was really hoping to like use this space to grow extra food in, um, which is why we got the galvanized metal piece to go around it. And although we have a few plants in here that are starting to grow, they're still teeny tiny and they've been this way for quite a while. So the con for me is that we struggle to grow in this because we had to put it in a shadier location, you have to make sure that the worms aren't getting like blasted by the sun and the heat. And in Florida, if it's exposed to sun for eight to 10 hours a day, it's just getting way too hot. So we picked a shady location for the worms, but in turn, we're not really, we haven't been able to grow anything in here yet. Um, so I'll probably do some research on even maybe some decorative shade plants, like shade loving plants that we can put in here, just so we have something growing in here and beautifies this space a little bit. So one of the other questions was, would we recommend this system? Yeah, I would definitely recommend the system. Um, it does what it's supposed to do. It composts. Um, it has worms, which are pretty cool, actually, um, if you like that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't smell if you live in an urban environment like we do. Um, it's yeah. small. It's compact. small, compact. Yeah, and, and it's a perfect size for our family, and we're a family of four. So yeah, I mean, I, I think it would even be good up to like a family of six or even seven. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is big enough. It also is user friendly. It's easy for a beginner composter because it comes right here with directions. And what Jose was saying about being big enough for a family of four up to a family of six is he's talking about like our kitchen scraps that we create and put in here. Um, we have enough kitchen scraps to keep this thing fed, um, but not so much that we have kitchen scraps sitting inside waiting to go in. So that's what he means when it could probably accommodate a family of up to six, um, especially if they're a family that loves produce like we do. We have plenty of kitchen scraps to feed our worms. So the one thing I would also advise is to be patient. Um, again, you know, Sapad says you can harvest from this system about the third, fourth month. For us, I think it's gonna be a little bit longer, which is fine, the food is being composted. It seems like I've thrown at least three times the size of this whole system of scraps in here and it just settles down. So you just gotta be patient. It is being composted, it's doing its job. All right, so all in all, we're both really happy with Subpod. Um, it's been a really easy, convenient system for us to use. We didn't have a lot of space for a big traditional compost bin setup, like a multiple bin setup, which is what we originally, you know, were thinking about but it just wasn't so easy to accommodate on our small property here. So we do really think that Subpod is a great like way to get started in composting for someone that's a beginner, for someone that has limited space, and for someone that's like nervous to start composting because they don't have a lot of experience. It's a very simple system and the bin is very easy to set up. So it's super user friendly. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the system we were first considering would take over a year before you can harvest any of your compost. Right. This is gonna take about, you know, four times less. Yeah, so that. even if it takes us six months to get, um, you know, the, the worm castings, our first round, that's still 
a lot sooner than we would have gotten from traditional compost. I mean, the composting time in general just takes a long time. So patience is something you're gonna need no matter what system you go with. And the worms, they take care of themselves. You know, if you get this raised bed or build your own, they will go in the garden and, you know, will aerate the soil, aerate the soil um, and they will take care of themselves. If they're too hot in here, they will cool off and get into that other garden area. Um, and again, like Nicole says, it's way easy. The steps are right on the lid, bottom of the lid for you to follow. Um, so it was great. I definitely would recommend the system. Yeah, and if you have kids, I think it would be a great thing for you to do with your mm -hmm. kids. It's easy for them to understand. They would be like, I think they would have fun, you know, picking out the kitchen scraps inside that can go like to feed the worms. They would love to come out and feed the worms. So I definitely think it's a family friendly system. It is. Um, Inside we have a, a 1.5 liter, like Jose was saying, um, little compost bin. It's really cute, looks very like farmhousey. Got it off of Amazon. It has um, a liner in it, a plastic liner. So Jose just brings the liner out with the food scraps. We fill that thing up probably every day, every other day. Um, if we have questions about what goes in there, we can check the lid or do a quick Google search. Um, but in general, we put all of our produce scraps, most of our fruit scraps, um, and any, I'm trying to think, like tea or coffee, we also put in there. And then we just bring it out to the, to the worms. It's a really fun way to not put all of that into the landfill. We'll make sure to put a link to that um, can uh, in, the, in the notes. But yeah, we do recommend it. Yeah, we both really like it. It's easy to use, like I said, which I think is the biggest thing. It was decently affordable for a compost system that's already set up and built for you. The worms were easily um, accessible. We found those quite easily. Red wigglers for hot weather. Yeah. They're the best type of worm. But also you might want to do a little bit of research depending on where you're at. But yeah, you got to look at what type of worm you're going to put in there. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's going to do it for our sub pod update. <laughs> um, again, we do like sub pod. We recommend it. We're going to keep using it. Uh, we'll show you guys as we continue to go through the process and when we harvest our first um, of worm castings or first amount of worm castings if you have any other specific questions just leave them in the comments below and we'll make sure to answer those for you this is not like a complete review this is like a midway point but we will mm -hmm. do another video once we harvest our first compost from the worm system yeah so hopefully that was helpful to you guys again if you have any specific questions just leave them below um, but until next time have a good one bye